Hey guys, so we're going to do a spirit talk. I got the tarot cup. I'm ready for it. We're going to talk about Doreen Virtue. Okay. And, uh, you know, one of the favorite people. Now, for those, you know, who don't know, most of you, if you're a reader, you know. But Doreen Virtue, she was very prominent on the path some years ago. She, uh, I guess you could say light worker if you want to say it. She did um, angel card certifications. She does. Well, she was behind uh, putting her name on decks that were designed, um, you know, Oracle decks and tarot decks. And she was she was a teacher of the path. She taught the light path and everything. A lot of people loved her. Uh, she had a great uh, following, but she became, uh, you know, saved and she became a very conservative Christian, um, which is all well and good and many people in the spiritual community if you want to you know uh, uh, do that that's fine but what she did it wasn't just that she also really turned on the path that really elevated her made her created her and uh, told everybody you know I've been saved and everything I believed all along was a lie deceived by demons whatever you could say all this path the angels are demons Okay, all the angels in the tarot decks are demons. It's all bad, and 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 she renounced everything. So that definitely at the time when that happened, they got a lot of buzz, uh, especially among people who were readers and healers and Reiki. And she said pretty much all of it's bad, all of it. Okay, every every little bit of it. You know, even Reiki. You know, uh, cards. Uh, you know, I I have a A to Z list. Um, if you do a little digging, I believe it's in Spirit Talk, and I went through the whole thing. She even made a A to Z list. She even said things like self-love were prideful. Affirmations were bad. Um, everything. I mean, it, it was so incredibly 180 extreme. I mean, think about it. Affirmations, positive affirmations are the devil. Okay. I mean, that's, that's some uh, heavy-duty stuff uh, to be saying. And so, you know, she's been, so she's got her own thing, her own channel, and she's got about 330 subscribers. I'm sure she lost people over time on her, her YouTube, but she's still got a pretty big following. So there were a lot of Christians following her, listening to her stuff. Well, recently she just um, decided to do a video, um, this is four days ago, uh, taking on Sylvia Brown and it's uh, it is kind of an interesting bid, but I got a couple things I want to say on it um, It says I remember Sylvia Brown shocking heresy and cruelty to grieving parents now This is this is my my very first big statement if I was going to say anything to Dory Virtue, especially personally Okay, you know, especially if she is uh, supposed to be Christian um, I know Sylvia Brown um I, I will go ahead and say that, especially toward the end of life, um, when she start when she became more famous, um, did she make mistakes? Uh, did she, you know, definitely made some mistakes on predictions or um, things? Were some of her, you know, uh, reads and things that you know very, you know, and, and there's a little snip here when people would go up and she would say something she could be very blunt and stuff um were they were they pretty bad um you know and things like that yeah i would probably say so they they there there feels a, a very coolness lack of compassion and, and stuff like that um you know so but i do believe maybe prior there obviously uh, you know something got her you know got her going but you know when she got on montel you know um there, yeah, I mean, you could you could look at the snips on her video, and, and it's just like what, <laughs> you know, and stuff. Maybe the delivery, okay, and stuff. Um, she obviously she did make some mistakes in some missing person. There there was a particular case where um, she said someone was deceased and they were actually found alive. Well, that's a good day, okay, if somebody's wrong on that. But you know that got used against her and so forth. Um, but, but my, my, my big argument here is kind of during virtue, well, she might be trying to show an example of, you know, whatever, uh, the woman is dead. Okay. So with that said, she can't defend herself. Okay. She can't defend herself. She can't explain herself. And so it's kind of in poor taste, you know, to hold Sylvia Brown up and be talking smack about her. I, I understand now, now I know though she is she, at the same time we could argue hey she was a very public figure she was 
you know, this, you know, she should be kind of looked at. Sure. But it is still kind of in poor taste. Okay. So um, uh, since Doreen is alive, uh, we'll go and talk about it. But there's also some other comments because once again, she's she's doing that whole thing. Uh, not only, you know, that, you know, how demons can possess and they can give true info, yada, yada, yada. That may not be wrong. Okay. Um, definitely. I, I have even said that before to people. You know, sometimes just because people have, you know, info, if they're connected to something, you know, negative, it could give true info. But there's usually a means to an end for it. Okay. And especially it may be even a destruction of either that person or others, you know, in some kind of way. And if you're a good reader and, and things like that, you can kind of sense the, the stuff, or even if you have ever sat with a reader that is something don't feel right here and stuff, the, the feelers will go off, but there's normally some kind of means to an end, uh, maybe to mislead or, you know, some things like that versus give any kind of authentic help and guidance to help somebody in a positive way. Um, you know, it, just even if I was going to, you know, uh, to read, like if I was talking to her, I said, I would be like, hey, you know, what, what is one thing the scripture says? You will know them by the works. You know, you will. And so, so is, is, is a reader helping people? Uh, maybe helping them dodge bullets, you could say, which, which sometimes I like to put, you know, maybe avoid something very negative, um, you know, things, you know, and, and go in a direction that can really help someone um, and, and things like that. We also have to uh, deal with a little bit of fallibility here. You know, people make mistakes. Now, there's there's a whole thing here, and I'm I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys. But she gives as she gives this whole thing, there is a, there is a scripture in here that she touches on. You know, especially is is if somebody is she still goes to it. You know, if somebody is a prophet, a god, or whatever, they'll, they'll be accurate, right? Um, if they if they're wrong, you know, they get false info. So her and this lady kind of discuss that, but then they also say, but but if they ain't talking about Christ and they give true info, it's demons, right? Okay, well wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you can't you you try to have a cake and eat it too here, and, and, and stuff like that, right? Okay, so which is it? So let me go ahead and before I get into this though, okay, and I've got it saved here. Okay, there's this whole thing, you know, well, okay, so so if I was talking to Reed, I'd say, okay, Doreen, you're talking about Sylvia Brown. She made some wrong predictions. We we know she did. Um, a lot of people have looked at that 2020 that it looks like she predicted something like COVID, right? That's in her end of the days, and a lot of people talked about it. But yes, she did make a lot of wrong predictions. You know, this is probably why I'm not a big fan of uh, psychics maybe putting up a big, huge book about predictions. Um, you know, though there are some like Nostradamus and also even um, Edgar Casey who put some pretty significant predictions out there, oh, guys. Okay. But uh, let's talk about something here. Okay. So, what about Christians, like people that are, you know, Say they're professing the word of Christ who made some wrong predictions because it happens. Um, let me see how many I can pull up here. Give me a moment. Uh, whoops. Nope. Nope. I didn't mean to go to that. Give me a moment. And we'll come. We'll, we'll show you the vid. But uh, just if I was going to argue, you know, not, not really argue with Sylvia Brown. Or I mean, uh, <laughs> Doreen Virtue, but have a talk. Let me just wake up. I'm having coffee. I just saw this vid. Let's see. Uh, preachers who predicted that Trump would win 2020. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. So what about them? Okay. Because, you know, there is scripture about prophets. You know, if you're wrong, it ain't coming from God. So what about all these? These are, um, these are supposed to be Christians. Okay. That are in churches. That are in churches. That, uh, you know, said that, that Trump would win 2020. Now, and then even when they were proven when they were proven, uh, you know, false and so forth. Um, <laughs> now they're trying to say, well, the election was stolen. Okay. You know, stuff like that. But even when they, they, they also made statements, you know, that even when he lost that somehow he was, God was going to put him back in the presidency. There's a whole lot of stuff here. So, um, you know, it's just the, you know, there was a huge meltdown, but all of these Christian, supposedly Christian, uh, preachers, pastors, whatever, you know, predicted, you know, that Trump would win and stuff. So, you know, let's, there's a, I, I believe this one here. What is this? Charisma activism. Let me, 
Okay, we got Pat Robertson and all these ones. Okay, so let's let's check this one out. Hopefully this works. Okay. I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Pat Robertson. The Lord said. But Trump will win. He wow. will be president of the United States. He will sit in that office for four more years. Another preacher. And God will have his way in this country. Donald Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. Absolutely will. Uh, you're sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure All about that Christian preachers. What's going to happen is, is that when people see the good that the country's coming into right now, the prosperity, the jobs, the economy, whatever the case may be, there's going to be no doubt he's going to sail right in for the first, second term. Now, I want you to shoot this out the way I want it. Donald Trump will win the election. These are all this Christians. Split edge over Joe Biden. So quote me. And I want it to be out before time. I saw that President Trump is, is reelected. And then I saw that then the, the uh, system, the system that was intact that he's, he's found he's been fighting against, he is going to take things out by the root. So I'm praying for him. I hope he gets reelected. I believe that he's going to get reelected. You know, I believe that's what God showed me, and I'm standing on. God that. showed him down from that that he was going to do two terms. He's going to win again easily. I declare Psalm 89, verse 21: Let your hand establish President Trump, and let your arm strengthen him. I declare Psalm 98, 1, that your right hand and your holy arm will give him victory. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. I hear a sound of victory. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. For I hear victory, 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 victory in the quarters of heaven. In the quarters of heaven. Victory, 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 victory. victory That's, that was victory, Trump's victory, spiritual victory. advisor, Paula White. Said that he would um, not be impeached. And the fact that he would win another term, and I was completely all wrong. Christian preachers. I take full responsibility for being wrong. There's no excuse for it. I I think it um, it doesn't make me a false prophet, but it oh. does actually create a credibility gap. And a lot of a lot a of people credibility trust gap. Trust my ministry, and um, I want to say that I'm very sorry for everyone who put their trust. But at least he me. apologized. Do you think that I am going to allow my who prophesied Trump's second term and prophesied with all this goodness coming to this nation to be mocked by a mass media manipulation. The Lord says, no, I shall not. For my namesake, I shall protect my word. I shall protect my people. I shall protect my prophets. He wrote to his followers, quote, either a lying spirit has filled the mouths of numerous trusted prophetic voices in America, or Donald J. Trump really has won the presidency. I hear the sound of victory. See? I hear the sound of victory. 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 Okay. There's a lot. There's so many more. There's, there's so many more. And um, a matter of fact, let me let me see if I can find it. If not, we'll get to it. It's okay, but I, I'm making a point. So if I was going to talk to Dory Virtue, these are Christian preachers. They're Christians. I got. I, I'm making a point here. Give me a moment and stuff. Uh, preachers making excuses why they were wrong in prophesizing Trump would win the election. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to get it brought up here. You know, there's, yeah, we got crazy. Oh, here's some crazy preachers. We could go that. Oh, okay. So, well, well, here's some reacting to the defeat and, you know, it, it, there, there's so much here. Oh, there, there's so much. And, and we know, you know, Greg Locke is, is one of the ones, um, you know, so there, there's, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of different things. Here's others prophesizing the election. Lecrae reacts to post-election videos um, and everything. Now, he might be a Christian. I said, well, we don't have to worry about the post-election. But um, anyway, so the the point being is, I, I guess, you know, uh, yeah, let's watch the crazy, crazy Preachers one. This might be fun. Let's see. Um, this is on On Demand News. Okay. My friend used Give to pay $163 for car insurance. This is them reacting to the defeat. Pays. Most insurance... This is I after... Hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. I got very really popular. Media said what? <laughs> Expose it all. Expose it all, Lord. 
This is after the, the loss. He's the worst. He's the worst. Let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory, God. And strike and strike and strike and strike. And strike until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you. Strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. The wounds, I hear a man. sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I asked, oh God, that you would take your iron rod, and I asked that you would smash the clay jar of deceit in America. And Lord, if it be your will, and if it be necessary, another election, another voting day, whatever it takes under your kingdom, oh God. Smash the delusion, Father of Joe Biden is our president. He is not. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. Bring it all in line. Bring it all in line with the will of God. Why are you attacking the prophets, the, the, the intercessors, the Christians, the positive voices, no matter who they God, are, even why? on the media, that are wanting <laughs> That's to see Donald Trump? That's why he's saying Real. why. He's saying why to God. Him? Could our faith be strong enough to pray for these two individuals that are at the helm of uh, what appears to us to be a great pattern of deceit? You ought to be attacking the lying media. You ought to be attacking the liars that are wanting to strip our freedoms from this well, it's you. Certainly, it's ideology you, the is Christian nationalist. You want to take freedom to its core. And if you think he's speaking in favor of the one that CNN celebrates. If you think he's speaking in alignment with the wicked of this world, if that's where you think God's voice is, then you don't know it. Let me tell you something. Every Christian, every pastor out there that voted for Joe Biden last night, you have bought a curse upon yourself and your family, your children and your children's children down to the third and fourth generation, and you need to repent. We release and, and commission and dispatch the angels into that place in Pennsylvania. You know, and in angels are agents of God, not humans. A human can't dispatch an angel. You could ask, you know, guardian for help, but a, a human can't. They're, they're not yours. We humble ourselves tonight, Lord God. We ask you in Jesus' See, always have, why? Father, that you'd forgive us. Why? As a people... They're coming here. They're he had a, a here. total breakdown. Jesus from South America. Oh my God. Please. From Africa. From this is South this America. is not healthy. Angelic forces. <laughs> Angelic reinforcement. God, you are pro life. Why? Would you be pro life for us, Jesus? We've played when we should have been praying. You get the idea. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, so anyway, so a lot of people, a lot of, there was a lot of preachers, and they were on YouTube, and if you do search, dig in, there's all kinds that predicted Trump would win 2020, right? Okay, okay, so let me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you see Doreen Virtue, like, she wants to hold up Sylvia Brown as some kind of an example, you know, that she made uh, mistakes on predictions and she did all this. Well, what about all these Christians that are, that, and there's a lot of them that, that were wrong. Okay. So, and in the video she did, oh, man, I can't even remember the scripture. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find it. I can't remember which one it is. Okay. All right. Let's see. Scripture in the book about prophesying in the name of God and being wrong. Okay, so there's a whole lot of thing about prophesy. So let me see if I can find it. It's, it's in her vid, and I'm going to show it in a second. Oh my God, it's been a while. Okay, here, I, I think this might be it. This might be one of them. Okay, so here's 
The Apostle Paul set down rules regarding prophesying in a worship service. Furthermore, he made it clear that these are rules set down by God. He stated this. Now, this isn't a worship service. A little different than a tarot reader on YouTube. But let's just... Anyone who claims to be a prophet or to have spiritual powers must acknowledge that what I am writing you is a command of the Lord. Okay, uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm trying to find it. Should have some kind of love in there. Let me see if this is the one. Now, this is this is something in 1 Corinthians 14, 31 to 33. For you can all prophesy one by one so that everyone may learn and everyone may be encouraged. And the prophet's spirits are under the control of the prophet, since God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. God is not a, a God of disorder, but of peace. Since God, uh, let's see, as in all the churches and the saints. Okay, so God, that that's, let two or three prophecy and let others, you know, he's he's got some rules. If any, um, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 37 to 38. Remember, this is rules of the church, Okay. If anyone thinks he's a prophet or spiritual, he should recognize that what, oh, okay, we've already, yep. Uh, Titus 1, 2, the truth gives them confidence of eternal life, which God promised them before the world began, he can't, and he cannot lie. God cannot lie. That's one thing. And that's pretty much, I, I, I feel like we all kind of agree, you know, God, God, that's one thing God can't do is lie. So anyway, there's a, oh, I know there's a, it, it's in her video. Let's just get to her video. We'll talk about it. But, but what, there is a rule. I, I know there are scriptures in there about, Hey, if you, if you, you could get in a bit, a lot of trouble for prophesizing wrong in the church in the name of God. Now, um, like I said, now these are kind of church, you know, rules, th things like, you know, say a preacher stand up in a congregation, that's a huge responsibility, you know, and then if, if, if that preacher is kind of being this kind of mouthpiece for God, saying certain things come up, God told me, God did this, God gave me this dream and, and, g and gives these things. Now, if he's proven wrong in the prophecy, you know, there, there's all kinds of, you shouldn't listen to them. Uh, they could be accused of being a false prophet. There is a little wee way sometimes they're being wrong. It sometimes happens. But, um, you know, a lot of these preachers that were wrong, you know, uh, didn't own up. So this is kind of one of the things when I sit there with during virtue, which we're going to get to the vid. I'm trying to make a point here. These are Christian pastors that were wrong about Trump winning the election. Many of them said he will win. Okay. And we even saw, but well, we even saw the one, remember the one preacher, he, he kind of apologized. But there are some that are being questioned and did, did some dark presence infiltrate all the churches and corrupt all the preachers. Okay. <laughs> you know, try, you know, well, that may not be wrong. And so maybe, maybe all the preachers were just kind of corrupted themselves. Maybe it could be that. Okay. But you know, they were clearly uh, proven wrong. But the, the, the irritating part <laughs> is that also during virtue and this friend that she's talking to in this, uh, in this video are like, well, well, demons could be right. Okay. So basically, uh, you know, what is it? The, the Christian preachers maybe were accidentally wrong, uh, about Trump being, but they're still Christians, right? You know, cause attacking the word of God, whoops, maybe it was a dark force and it wasn't the fault. But you know, um, if, if us terror readers who were on YouTube predicted that, that Biden would win the election, right? or whatever, then it must be automatic, right? It's, it's automatic because they're not, they, they, they're using tarot cards. Okay. Well, why, why couldn't, you know, our, our connection with tarot and, and given messages of spirit be of God? Okay. Why, why not? It's stuff because we, we aren't opening a Bible and doing it okay. in doing these predictions. Okay. Okay, so so I don't know. You're trying to have your cake and eat it too here. But I'm giving a point here. Okay, what about all these people that are supposed to be Christians? They're clearly in, in and they're preaching from the Bible and they're, they got it wrong. And they got it wrong. Well, if they got it wrong, right? God can't lie. Couldn't be a God. So when they're, they're opening their mouths and saying God told them that Trump will win the election. You saw Pat Robertson, 700 Club. Trump's going to win. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's look at Sylvia Brown uh, or uh, Dory Virtue talking um, about Sylvia Brown. And we're going to talk about it because like I said, it's, you know, I know she, uh, I know she's celebrity. So we could say, you know what, she's celebrity, but the woman's not alive. Okay, so it's almost, it's almost not totally fair. Can you tell me my spirit guide's name? 
So yeah, hold on one second. Guy's name oh, I tried to get to um, her. The, her believers look past. She said that um, in 2020, in there. there'll be a tiny digital device will be placed in the That's frontal lobes of, her of the brain. Her things that she, she said, got wrong. Blindness and deafness will be a thing of the past by 2020. Oh, wow. Did yes. that happen? I don't think so. No. So the truth and the lies are always mixed together, aren't they? I mean, Genesis 3, the serpent did that. She was convinced, as was I back then, that uh, God is only love and that anyone who teaches any kind of fear... Anything having to do with sin, repentance, hell, or Satan. Okay. God is only love. Scripture is about God is love. It's a book. According to Learn Religion. Okay, so this John is First John 4.16, 4, Dory Virtue. Love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Fairchild, Mary. 1 John 4, 16, God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and dwelleth in him. Okay. There's a whole lot. There, there, if you look up God is love, you know, you can find all kinds of things. Here are 15 best Bible verses about God's love in Christianity. Tons. What does the Bible say about God's love? Ton, ton, ton. And I got, you know, and of course, you know, the angry God, the meaning God, right? Okay, whatever. But there's, there's so much, you know, in here. So uh, here, first John four, seven to eight, you know, John is a pretty loving book, by the way. Uh, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Okay, okay. So, during virtue, in the Bible, God is love. Not God is love, but... <laughs> God is love, but... It says God is love. That's a big, is love. So when you're saying the word love, when you're talking about love, you are talking about God. The two are the same thing. Okay, it, it, it's it's the same thing. So say you got someone like me, or say you got, um, you know, uh, uh, some light worker, or a spiritualist who was saying God is love. And you're trying to say, oh, they, they, they only talk God is love. Well, how do you, what, this is, God is love. Okay, so what is the difference between when you say God is love and say someone like me or another person who maybe is, is not sitting in a church listening to crazy people like those guys I show you, you don't want to strike and strike and strike and strike. What is the difference? If God is love, okay, if they're talking about God being loving and all this stuff and you're saying it, why are they... <laughs> You know, because because you're not opening the Bible, because you use the tarot cards. God is love. We're saying the same thing. First John four nine to eleven. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son in the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son in atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Which I know, you know, I know that's about Jesus, that this is supposed to be the, the expression of love. I sent my son, you know, which I know there are a lot of people, oh, but to die. So, you know, and everything, but you know, that it, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, the, the loving act that, you know, that's, that's, that's the story. Okay. First John four sixteen, And so we know we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. There, there are so many statements in the Bible. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. It's all in there. If somebody lives in love, they're living in God. Okay? They're, if they live in love, they're living in God. If they're being loving, that's God. Okay? If they're not being loving, that's not God. Right? We, we would have to say that and everything. There, there's so much I, I, I could unpack here. You know? And then we've got Romans 8, 37, 39. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, 
neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus the Lord so you know and that's that's in Romans you know that really we it can't separate us Let, let's read that again let's look at this again this is in you know to read it, it's right there no in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Jesus Christ our Lord okay so so what they're saying is all this stuff maybe that's trying to separate you know us from God you know and, and I know it sometimes feels like there there's a lot right you know and even and, and Jesus you know even if somebody is let's just say you know maybe they're maybe they're not going to church maybe they're not reading the Bible but no matter what no matter what it is can't separate from that love okay even like I said even if they're not necessarily reading the book maybe they're unbelieving no matter what God loves Jesus loves no matter what okay it's it's just unconditional that, that none of this stuff is going to separate us in the end I see this is one of the things and I know Doreen would love to take me to task on and this is something I have said you know with this whole thing about hell which some of this stuff got embedded and twisted later guys okay we all eventually will evolve into the light God loves everybody unconditionally God is love it's right there Everybody I do believe will eventually evolve into the light. And I know there's a whole lot. Oh, but what about all people going to bed? Everybody, we all will in inevitably evolve into the light. Okay. That's, that's the bottom line. That's, you know, that's me. That's just, that's what I've seen. That's what I feel regardless, regardless. Okay. Because God is love and we all got the divine spark within. And that's all little piece of God in there, which I could talk about that too. I could, I could, I could debate. You know, easily do read on that, that we got a little God spark within. That has never been wrong. It's all in there. Okay. I stop. Let's see. Isaiah 54 10. Do the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed? Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who is compassion for you. There's so much in there. Romans 5 8. For, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us it, it's all there this is love 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 demonstrate love 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 all of it all of it there's so one so anyway so she kind of sits there so let, let, let's go over that again let's just trying to Erica, let's do it again her. let's so pop she it up started again. her own church which is still going uh nova spiritus yep, she yep. called herself a christian gnostic a christian gnostic that's an oxymoron jen because Gnosticism is the opposite of Christianity. It's not the I mean, opposite. You could do a whole, it's not a the opposite. Study. There, there's a whole thing. Everybody, I, I know the Christians, especially the, the, you know, um, the fundamentalists. Sorry, my nose. Um, the fundamentalists have have battled about the Gnostics. This goes way, way back and stuff because there, there was a little bit of, um, you know, some some differing things that come in there. We, you know, like we've had you know the various you know uh the scriptures that were found over time some of the gnostic gospels and things and you know um you know i obviously there's a little bit of talk even about the da vinci code angels and demons you know the books by dan brown um you know that various things you know what mary magdalene you know um you know so you know was was mary magdalene actually a wife a partner does it really matter in the end though does it does it really matter um, you know, but, uh, but definitely, you know, one of the things is, is they, they tried the church really tried to mess with Mary Magdalene to try to make her a prostitute where she is looking more a disciple. Okay. That is true. There's a whole lot there. Okay. That even the church later, much, much later took that away from Mary Magdalene and, and pulled that off. That all of a sudden, all of a sudden that, that, that took, that was, that's fairly recent news that they finally took away this whole, you know, prostitute thing for Mary Magdalene. Okay. But just think all this time, Mary Magdalene was basically labeled as a prostitute, you know, that, that Jesus saved her or whatever, where she was really looking more, especially some of these, these gospels as more would have like a, a disciple, 
okay, that she was out there. And we also got to remember it was women, you know, who were, you know, like when the tomb, you know, they went there <laughs> and they saw Jesus is God. It was the women, you know, and I believe Mary Magdalene was one of them there. Okay, so there's there's a whole lot there. Um, and there there's even uh, possibly that Mary Magdalene was even more beloved than the other, you know, disciples, you know, that became the apostles. And so anyway, anyway, just, you know, um, there's, and as far as what she's about to say, let me just explain a little, just a wee bit, um, when it comes to some of the Gnostic, um, there is the Demiurge, okay, uh, which, you know, that, that whole thing, it, it's, it's not as much that the, the Gnostics were trying to say God was, was really a demon and then, <laughs> that Satan's a good guy. That is not what the Gnostics are, which he's going to try to say. There is a demiurge, which kind of creates this kind of imperfect thing. But spirit, the true spirit, is trapped in matter. It is, is a little bit more what the Gnostics believe. And, of course, part of that is kind of freeing the, the true spirit. And so, so we, but think about it. When we kind of look at some things, you know, with... Um, you know, some of this, you know, even in the Old Testament, there seems to be a, a meaning God energy. But even Jesus, when comes, it is talking about this God is love, God is love. There's a different energy between the two books. I'm just saying, there is a different energy, you know, when you're kind of reading some of the more, the war kind of God. We're seeing more of this war kind of God energy. Um, and that would be very um, fitting with the age of Aries and then going into the age of Pisces further in there, which age of Pisces is a little further past Jesus. Just saying, you know, if, if you're going to do the astrology, a little further, okay? But still, you know, kind of coming into this age of Pisces where there's more God is love kind of energy. But not that everybody picked that up as we know. You know, with history, we can see a lot of bloodshed. We, we know that, right? But that's that's just a little bit more, you know, uh, some of the, the feels and, and the things that the Gnostics had a little bit of a different uh, view, you know, that there was maybe this meaty God that kind of took over, that was trying to be the God, and, and, and perhaps maybe in their psyche, if I was just going to sit there and kind of reason with it, they were looking, you know, look at all these wars and it's in the name of God, you know, and, and, and so maybe that, you know, it, it kind of their own kind of working with the spirit, you know, that, that there was a, maybe some kind of confusion, deception, uh, maybe confusion. Bit, let's just say maybe confused in versus deception that they that people were feeling this kind of war god mentality was not necessarily the true spirit loving god okay and that the true spirit was trapped in matter and kind of had to be released okay so there's a, a little bit of that is is kind of a, just a, a little very brief very crude um thing maybe with a little bit of the gnostic energy um and then you know obviously we have some scriptures like i said mary magdalene is looking more like a partner of jesus um versus necessarily you know definitely not a prostitute okay which uh matter of fact let me just pull it up and see if i could find it what what is the exact year what is the year that the catholic church uh took away that mary magdalene had been a prostitute Okay. In 1960 Wikipedia, in 1969, Pope Paul VI removed the identification of Mary Magdalene with Mary of Bethany and the sinful woman from the general Roman calendar, but the view of her as a former prostitute has persisted in popular culture. Yep, it has. So there there's a couple Marys here, but they were equating Mary a, a prostitute for a long time until about 1969. Okay, but even and, and still even you know, um, and just like, yeah, I mean, even in the History Channel, there's an article here, 2019, how early church leaders downplayed Mary Magdalene's influence by calling her a whore. But the, the Gnostic Gospels actually, get, you know, were a little more truthful about her role, you know, in, in bringing, you know, like uh, with the Christ and Christianity. You know, there's, there's a whole lot there. So you got to say, why is the church doing this to someone who is really a disciple? And stuff, you know, and, and just even the independent Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute, but a devoted disciple who supported Jesus. It even says financially and spiritually and stuff. There, there's a whole lot there. But uh, yeah, I mean, because they wanted to downplay any kind of role, women had any kind of authority, leadership, um, you know, in, in Christianity or bringing about the church. Absolutely. So somebody who was really a disciple, um, really maybe even a little side by side with Jesus, um, 
you know, got downplayed. It's but the, where the Gnostic Gospels seem to give a more honest interpretation of who Mary Magdalene was and their role in this. Okay, so there's a whole lot I could say on that, but let's let's get back to what I know. I know you want to hear on your videos of Gnosticism. The core of Gnosticism is based on the Antichrist inversion of good and evil. Leading ancient Gnostics like the Valentinians inverted the creation event, claiming that Yahweh, the creator God, was evil, and therefore the resulting creation and all matter was also evil. They taught that the human race was imprisoned by Yahweh in evil human bodies. They taught that when Satan deceived Eve now, hold and on. told her that she could become God. I don't think, now let me double check. I could be wrong. I don't think the Gnostics say Yahweh. They're, they're, okay. All right. Gnostic Gospels, Demiurge, and Yahweh. I could be, I could be wrong. Um, they're, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, okay. Oh, maybe they do use the word Yahweh, I'm not sure. Yeah, some, some did uh, identify, some Gnostics, Yahweh, yeah. Remember, God, the, the God has, has many names in the, in the Bible. Okay, there's all Elohim, for example, you know, things like that. So, I just wanted to double check that because I wasn't really sure. Um, but yes, the Demiurge, and, and let me go ahead and explain that real quick. Here's Gnosticism explained what I'm talking about. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. The Demiurge, um, Greek for craftsman, um, is the being who created the world in Gnosticism. The Gnostics identified him with the, with the God of the Old Testament. The Gnostic scriptures portray him as ignorant, malicious, and utterly inferior to the true God who sent Christ to earth to save humankind from the Demiurge evil world. So like I said, go, let's go back to way back in the day. If you were a being living in that time, let's just, if we're, we're just going to humor ourselves and we see all this, think of the war, you know, we got the Romans, we got to be fighting with each other. We see a lot of cruelty. We see a lot of strife, just constant battles. You know, this is a very age of Aries time, right? Okay, so how do you kind of reconcile a God is love energy with that? Okay, Demiurge is given many names in the Gnostic scriptures, but the three most common uh, ones are Yaldabaoth, uh, Samel, and Saklas. Okay, so I don't see the Yahweh here. See, that's what I want to, so it looks like some are saying that, but the those that are talking about the Gnostic scriptures are not saying Yahweh. Okay. I said, but that's what I wanted to uh, check there. Okay, the meaning of Yaldabaoth is uncertain. Okay, so they don't even know the meaning of that. The Gnostics text on the origin of the world fancifully translate is youth, move over there, but not word, string of the word. So some of these, they're, they're not even sure the meaning. Okay, and uh, so so this is where they're getting it. Um Yaldabaoth is somewhat close to Child of Chaos in Aramaic, but it's still a stretch. As it is intuitively plausible, suggests that it could be a condensed form of Yahweh, Lord of Sabbath. Could be Yahweh, Lord of Sabbath, con combining that phrase. But there, there, it's all speculation. Nobody knows. Okay, so I, I just wanted to correct that because they're saying that the Gnostics are saying Yahweh as a name, you know, which can be a holy name to someone who is Jewish, right? But, but that's not what they're saying. So this is incorrect. And th that's what I was like. I'm pretty sure the Gnostics are not saying Yahweh, but let me double check. I could be wrong. Okay. I, I've tried to fact check here and let me just go on in the Gnostic creation myth, heaven, which is the Gnostics called the, uh, Plurma fullness that existed until a divine entity named Sophia tried to conceive on her own without the involvement of her heavenly partner or the consent, or consent of God. Sophia gave birth to a son who was a product of the rebellious and profane desire that had arisen within her. So this feels very metaphorical, really, guys. Okay. The son of hers was the Demiurge. The Gnostic text, Reality of the, the Rulers, describes him as androgynous being, an arrogant beast that resembled an aborted fetus in both appearance and character, you know, so, so forth. So, and then Sophia really also is, is something for wisdom. Um, another name, you know, there's Sophia. 
And then when Sophia saw the horrifying twisted being that had come from her, she was deeply ashamed and afraid. She disowned him and cast him out of heaven. Okay. From this lonely position where his madness and conceit would go unchecked, the Demiurge gave birth to the arcane rulers, beings that were like him and could help administer the material world. Now you can see where people could have a problem with this, right? This is a little different and everything, which like all creations was a reflection of the personality of the creator and the Demiurge. And then they say created Adam and Eve. Um, and it was a prison, a prison, uh, divine sparks from heaven within them. So remember divine spark, right? We talk about that all the time. Uh, but he told them that he was only God and assumed, tech, you know, all this stuff and everything, tree of knowledge, good of evil, all that stuff. Okay. So there, there's a whole lot there um, that obviously you could see why maybe people be like, wow, this is very contrary, but I just want you to kind of step back. If we kind of go back and look at our ancestors, you know, like I said, they're seeing the world, they're seeing this chaos they're seeing this war. They're hearing about these violent, you know, the, the violent God wanting to smite, smite. And we even see that in church, smite, 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 take your iron rod. That sounds a little demiurgy, right? Okay, and stuff that, that maybe what the Gnostics were talking about, but they were understanding more of a goddess love energy. And they believe, you know, Jesus came from the, you know, the, the God that was kind of trapped in matter and everything and was trying to, to bring that about and everything. And that divine spark awakened within everybody, right? Okay, and stuff. So we got a little of that and everything. So this here, you know, what they're kind of, they're trying to say it's a flip or even Yahweh, which like I said, is a holy name, you know, it is not entirely 100% you know, the understanding of really what the Gnostics were trying to express. So I want to just kind of give you just a little bit, at least a little of, of some of the understanding. Really, the tarot has a little, it has some Gnostic um, tones in there, absolutely. But just maybe what the Gnostics were trying to express. And would that necessarily be wrong in the sense that back in the day, you know, if we look at the Old Testament, we've got some kind of angry energy. We have a very different, when we go into the New Testament, talk about a very loving God. And, you know, a lot of God is love, God is love energy. I mean, it's all right there. So it, it, it's hard not to kind of look at that. Maybe some of the things that the Gnostics were kind of believing. And then just even kind of, oh, look at this Bible. You know, maybe there's maybe there's something to this. Okay, that's, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's kind of go back. By partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that it was really a good thing. And that it really wasn't Satan, but the goddess Sophia, who used the serpent to instruct Eve. Satan, through Gnosticism, became the savior, and God became the devil. Through this cosmic shell game, it's Satan not was as able much even the devil, Gnostics, but a meaning mass God. Gnostic inversion, effectively turning God into the devil and the devil into the savior. A Gnostic basically um, believes in a, a mother and a father God. Sylvia Brown wrote a book about Mother God. She said it's Asna is the name she gave to Mother God. She frequently other workshops would teach okay so there's also if i was going to just just go ahead and and um look to even the the jewish kabbalah there was also the shekinah which is also the feminine okay it, there, so there is a feminine energy the scripture hardly talked about you know in biblical of course but even like i said the the kabbalah and let me just go ahead kabbalah and shekinah Hopefully I can, nope, that's, it, this is going to be hard to get the Kabbalah and Shekinah goddess. Let me see if I can get, come on, if you could, I'm trying to get it. Okay, so here's, well, hopefully it's halfway decent. The cosmic Shekinah historical study of the goddess in the Old Testament. So there's little bits, hints of it, not a whole lot of talk of it, unfortunately, but there is the Shekinah in, in the Kabbalah and stuff. And there is a feminine okay it's old testament and every okay that's a that's a book uh, trying to find a halfway decent to kind of get you in there but yeah there's there's a goddess energy in there okay a shekinah of the divine feminine this is in my jewish learning okay so this is actually a jewish website um it, it's part of jewish mysticism you know and uh, here's just let me see if i can pull just in there in contemporary, in contemporary Jewish discourse, the term Shekinah is most commonly refers to the divine feminine or to the feminine aspect of God. God is mother, nurturer, protector, and compassionate one. Through the term, the Hebrew um, root, uh, meaning to dwell, is found throughout early rabbinic literature 
In its early usage, it's referred generally to God's presence among the people and had no gender associations. The connection between Shekinah and femininity energies, mainly in Jewish mystical literature. The concept was later embraced by Jewish feminists and the counterbalance by prevailing masculine notions of God as king, father, and judge. You know, and then early appearances, we'll just, just briefly, but I'm just trying to get you to understand. It's always been there, guys, in the scriptures. A term Shekinah does not appear in the Hebrew Bible. The closest reference is two verses in Exodus and when God promises to dwell. Okay, and that that is in there. Uh, Shakanti, hopefully I've said it. Um, among the Israelites, once they had built the tabernacle. In Zohar, the core work of Jewish mysticism would later associate the tabernacle in Hebrew Bishkan with the Shekinah, both of which derive from the same Hebrew root. There's a whole lot with the, the words, with the Hebrew words, okay? The term shows up in a handful of places in the Mishnah, uh, perhaps most famously in Perki, Abat 3, 2, which is kind of hard break down, which states that if two people sit together and share words of Torah, the Shekinah abides within them. Okay, now some of this even in the tarot, the high priestess. Okay. And there's, 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 uh, yes, references to Shekinah abound in the Talmud. Uh, some of them similar aphorisms of various human activities that cause a divine presence to dwell amongst the people. Okay, so there, there's a whole thing there. There is a divine feminine. It does, you know, but these evangelicals and all that don't want to acknowledge it. But it is in Jewish mysticism, which is, you know, the core of, of all this, right? And there's, there's a whole world there, guys, that people don't know. So when they're trying to talk about this goddess and feminine and trying to, okay, well, it's right there. Th this is this is some core, you know, Jewish teachings about the Shekinah that is all connected, especially in, in Kabbalah, Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism. You know, and this is, I, I know this is further, I, I know this can be more advanced kind of studies of Jewish people. And, and let me just uh, uh, pop in here and I'll, I'll give credit to the website. As Rabbi Leah Novik observed in her book on the wings of Shekinah, rediscovering Judaism, divine feminine, while the rabbis of the Talmud did not explicitly identify Shekinah as feminine, many attributes they describe, uh, they ascribe to her are common ancient goddesses, love, compassion, justice, and healing. Okay, so there's there's a whole lot there, and and yes, let me oh let me go real quick. Uh, Shek Shekinah in Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah gives the Shekinah a distinctly female quality. One of the earliest works of Jewish mysticism, Sefer Habahir, except <laughs> states that when the righteous behave appropriately, Shekinah rests among them, and through their deeds, she rests in the bosom of the Holy One, and makes them fruitful and increases them. The Zohar compares the Shekinah to a mother, sister, daughter, and bride. There's a whole lot. If you want to study all that, it's all there, guys. So the, my point is, especially for those that are women, I do not think that that even, you know, in Bible, in Jewish mysticism, all about there is no feminine. There is. Okay, there is. And just as I was saying, even Mary Magdalene, okay, <laughs> they tried to make her a prostitute and she wasn't. And it took till 1969 before they even took that away. Okay. Which is not a long time ago, considering how long Christianity has been around. Okay. But still, still, they still to this day try to downplay her role. But Gnosticism did not downplay her role. Okay. See, I, I know I'm already, you haven't even hardly seen the Dory Virtue video yet. And I've already spoke 53 minutes, but this is stuff that needs to be kind of said there. You know, so yeah, let's, let's go. So, okay. So she's bashing on Sylvia Brown. Let's, let's get to it. I just want, I just want you to, guys to kind of look at that. Think about it. Some of this, this stuff here, you know, like I said, already, she said, God is love and like, oh, but people say God is love. And it's like, well, yeah, it's in your Bible and stuff and, and everything. And that's what people are trying to get to. And now this stuff, oh, about women and all this stuff. Well, but it's, you know, it's all in the Jew, Jewish mysticism and stuff, the Shekinah and everything. So let's, let's well, get to, to it. Oh, well, mother God. She said that the Roman Catholic Church and the early um, Apostolic Fathers were intimidated by women, so they purposely made uh, our our God, our our God, our Creator, into a single man. I used to teach that too before I was saved, and I apologize and repent for that. Um, it's, but it's true. It's just shocking they stuff. took so, the feminine um, the out. 2020 prediction. Um, many people say that when they look at the description, it's really talking about. SARS, 
Uh, and she made a lot no, of No, she didn't she didn't say SARS. So that that's where they're passed. kind of talking about. I'm going to get past some of it cuz they're just going to go into her predictions. We'll get to some vid. Um, you know, because she got a lot wrong. Yes, she did. And stuff. Um, but she did not say anything SARS. She said a flu like in 2020. We know what happened with COVID and everything. It looks like she got that one right. Now, I know she got a lot of stuff wrong. And I know we could all say, what is that saying? You know, hey, a, a broken clock strikes twice, you know, right, you know, what, you know, every day or something like that, you know, and everything. And this is why, you know, like I, I will do political predictions and I will do that and, and, and read, you know, and things. But as far as would I ever sit down and write a whole thing of predictions, I don't think I have the stamina for it, like say Nostradamus or Edgar Casey did and stuff. But anyway, let's, I, I just want to get past some of that. Let's get to kind of some of the she stuff said that, um, in where they're kind of trying to shame her. Seven, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Talking about okay, some, okay. of course, for the future. But what people need to know is that demons can make predictions and they, and they can do it well. Um, see, this is, as, difficult see, this is, let me, I know, I, I'm going to let it play, but see, this is why I wanted to bring you the Trump prophecy. Okay. So all those people are wrong, but what does that mean? But wait a minute, they're Christians. Maybe, maybe something came over them and it's not their fault. But if us tarot readers or us other, you know, spiritualists who may have more, you know, we may got our Buddha statues here. We may have a Ganesh hanging on the wall and all that always, it, it's all evil. And they're right because it's a demon right? That, that's kind of not fair. That's not fair. But go ahead, have so your say. Powerful. Um, Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us about the different powers, the principalities. Demons are intelligent um, and they're powerful. They can manipulate things and do things. Um, people, we can make predictions. If I, I say this all the time, if you know, if you, you're mar we're married, and if your husband does something Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, on Friday, you can predict he's going to do yeah. it with like a 98% um, accuracy, but the point is only God knows. Here we can read what Sylvia Brown wrote about a severe pneumonia-like illness around 2020 that would spread around the globe. That certainly sounds like what happened until we get to the part where she says that this illness will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, and that has not happened. It is still with us, unfortunately. We can also see that she wrote that in 2020, that there would be higher salaries for yep, teachers. Yeah, I know, I know. She got a lot wrong. Let's get to it. Let's kind of get to this. And she would say, and she had that real gravelly voice, you know. And now you got to talk about her voice. Uh, she's dead. Get over it. And, and <laughs> you got to talk about her voice. Step out of it. Get over it. And it just, it, there was not that warmth and compassion. She's right about that. She wasn't very warm. In the movie business? No. <laughs> Honey, I didn't know. You're not going to win the lottery. I'm not. No, you had a dream about me maybe because you wanted to win the lottery, but you never won the lottery. No. You have to go to a doctor. You have a problem, and I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Yes, sir, you have a question, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. I want to know um, the relationship that I am in now, what's the future for it, and am I going to have kids? Is the relationship he's living right now going to work, and will he have kids? No, it's not going to work, and he's going to find somebody else to have kids. Well... <laughs> and can you tell me my spirit guide's name? Yeah, your spirit guide's name is um, Lena. Mm. Thank you. Can you tell me where my love life's going? Nowhere. <laughs> he was so, so ill. Terry Flans knew her son Mark was dying of cancer. He was in a coma. But she prayed he would win the fight of his life. And I thought the old Mark was coming back. But that just lasted one day, and then from then on, it was just downhill. And he kept getting worse. So two weeks ago, Mrs. Flans went to the St. Louis appearance of self-proclaimed psychic Sylvia Brown, silently pleading for help. I got to talk to her. And my number was the first one picked. And I was so excited. Unbelievable. Told my son was dying, and I was wanting to know if he was going to live. And she, matter of factly, said, yes, he's going to live. My son is in the hospital, fighting for his life. And we know he's in any way that people will save him. Yeah, they will save him. Brown told her that Mark would get a miraculous treatment and would be better by the end of the month, that Flans should not bring him home for hospice care, but leave him in the hospital. My life was 
you know, keep him there for a while. I wanted to believe her. Yeah, I believed her. I don't give a damn what the doctors say, Brown told Plans. Your son will survive. He started pre-gaining his strength even at the end of this month. And I'm going to give him that long. Now we're giving him a kind of we have a damn. Two days later, Mark was dead. Mark didn't want to die in the hospital. Oh, that's so so this is just um just giving a just a thing i don't do these kind of predictions um just just myself um would and matter of fact i have a huge rule in the group and stuff no death predictions now obviously if i'm dealing with a missing person that's that's a little different thing you don't feel are they here with us or not that's the only exception that i maybe have because we're trying to figure out where someone is and and maybe spirits kind of make me feel that either they're with us or not um things like that but as far as it, like if anybody comes to me you know maybe wanting to know if a, a loved one's going to make it or any i stay out of it it is just it, it is just for my own um, it's, it's one of the things spirit does not want me to go into that area. Um, you know, and, and I've, there are times people have tried to come in the group. Will my loved one make it? It has certainly happened. And, and I always apologize. I'm, I'm real sorry. You know, we, we can't go into those kind of, um, reads and stuff, you know, but I, we're more than happy to pray for you. You know, maybe I won't post the actual request, but I'll tag him, do a post. You know, I'm very sorry that you're going through this. You know, unfortunately we can't go there. We can't, we can't, we can't do a, a reading on that. Um, you know, you could obviously see how things could get dark and even could potentially interfere with something like that versus like she wanted to take him to a hospice versus leave him in the hospital. She listened to Sylvia Brown and I know mom's only doing her best. Okay. I get it. She's at her wits end here. And Sylvia Brown's like, nope, he's going to be fine. Keep him in the hospital. And she's like, I, I should have took him in the hospice. And it looks like even maybe the spirit, whoops, turn off alarm spirit. I mean, whoa, I'm telling the spirit to do it. Um, Alexa, turn off the alarm. Oh, I'm, I'm all in the spirit. <laughs> turn off the alarm spirit. <laughs> but anyway, um, this, this is, and this is why, you know, you know, we're not doctors and this is not something we can afford to be wrong on. So I, I, I completely stay out of things like this. Um, like I said, there are times people over time have popped up and, and maybe, you know, will my loved one make it? What can we do? We can't give any kind of medical advice. I'm sorry, but we're more than happy as a group to pray for you that your loved one will make it, that they will survive. You know, I'm more than happy to offer prayers of what we can do. Um, but that is an area we can't go. And so, so Sylvia Brown, yes, was it irresponsible that she did this to this woman and she, you know, is kind of up there and making these statements? Yes, of course it is. Could there be some potential karma a little bit or coming into the next life with some residue? Probably. Um, and so, you know, I can understand now. I know she's showing the worst of the worst, her Doreen Virtue. I, 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 and I'm, I'm a hundred percent really on board, you know, with, with that, you know, that this, this was not right, you know, and it caused this woman more pain, no matter what, and this is a hard one, um, you know, no matter what, sadly for, for whatever reason, you know, it was, it was coming to be the, this poor woman's time with her son you know, that he was going to leave this earth and, and everything. And, and I, I know we just, we want to fight it. We want to resist it. We want to do what we can do, you know, anytime, you know, if I was losing my child, I'm going to do everything, you know, of course, you know, anything I can to be able to stop or vent. I'm going to pull all the stops, obviously with doctors, but I'm going to do all my spiritual, you know, I'm, I'm going to do everything, you know, and stuff. But, but, uh, you know, of course, and this is very sad, but like I said, this is an area, this is why I have a rule. This is a, this is a big reason and stuff that, that, you know, when it, when it comes to any kind of, um, you know, situations, if somebody is, you know, um, on the verge of uh, passing, uh, you know, all that stuff, we stay out of it and stuff. If people go into other groups and this and that, and they allow it, that's our business fine, but not in mine. Okay. But Sylvia Brown told us that he no, Mama. My daughter-in-law wanted to take him home with hospice, but she was so, so negative because she thought she was doing the wrong thing because of what Sylvia Brown said. She taught that uh, love your neighbor is the most important thing Jesus taught, that we're here to be loving to each other, but she was very open that um, she and her family member didn't speak anymore, um, her choice and that uh, and that was okay and she she taught against forgiveness quite a bit 
uh, that there was no need to forgive. In 2002, Brown informed uh, parents of an 11-year-old boy who had been who had disappeared earlier that year that he was kidnapped by a dark-skinned Hispanic man with dreadlocks and was now deceased. Well, he was found alive in yep, 2007. I, that was a big His one. Kidnapper was Caucasian and short-haired. You have done everything, almost everything conceivably possible to at least try to find a clue, something from organizing search parties and the community has gotten involved and still yet not even a win. Is there? Is there any win at all of what happened? There's absolutely no evidence to support any any kind of theory. He left the house, I'm sorry, he left the house at what time? One fifteen. And there were some children who said that they saw him at what time? Around four. There's been sightings up to 4.30. But he was only traveling to a friend's house, which was seven-tenths of a mile away, so he could have gotten there in five or six minutes. So what do you think? When, and none of his other friends anywhere in, around saw him, correct, between that time? No, most the friends that he played with normally on a regular basis didn't see him that day. Um, there were just some other kids that he normally didn't play with that have seen him. Now, let me just stop it, and we know she's she we know she's gonna get it wrong, we, we know. And uh, oh, somebody's oh god, that's tarot class. Hold on, I, I think they hit something wrong. We know she's gonna get it wrong, and as I say that, <laughs> the ringing, um, you know, and, and we'll sh we'll show what we said, um, you know, and everything. Now, with oh, god, this is hard. Busy person, busy persons, you know, um, psychics. Of course, they do want to help. They do want to do things, but I kind of look at, okay, you've got this audience, you've got this family and everything. It's very public and it's very, uh, you know, you know, it, it, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, I, it, it should be more, you know, definitely, you know, about really finding the person, you know, and, and trying and, and I don't know how good or how many, um, you know, reads Sylvia Brown did on the missing, um, the missing persons and, and things like that. I, I'm not sure how many cases she ever got involved in. Um, I don't know of any that she was right about. Um, if some, if this, you know, if some readers can be good at this and, and find some things I, I do. Um, you know, there are times I've be able to be, you know, write about some things there. I, mean, I even just recently did the Kylie Rodney. Um, I felt she was in the reservoir. Like I said, I, even after it had been searched, I still felt she was in the reservoir. Um, she was found in the reservoir. Um, and, um, there's, there's, you know, and I know we can't always, it, it, the location is the frustrating part that, that is, that is the fight. Um, you know, with things like that, we don't always, you know, we know, but we feel something, um, the, the one, um, Eliza who, um, was abducted off the street, um, that was, there was a little bit more, um, difficult, but I did feel she would be found the fifth or sixth when the moon was in Capricorn. She, she was, she was found on the fifth. Um, you know, when that was, that it kind of sorted through that. I was, I was kind of trying to feel things out, but then I was like, you know what, it doesn't look like, you know, there were some rumors about the husband and maybe a nanny. And I, after I got to the second, I'm like, this, this isn't, there's no nanny. Whatever started this rumor, there's no affair here. And so there, obviously addiction did pull up in there. There were some things, there were some, you know, issues, but they were doing their best, but it looked like there, that, that was all BS. Um, sometimes rumors happen and, and, and stuff. And we looked at that. Um, in that case, you know, so we, we do our best to try to, and then of course, um, the big one I did was Heidi Broussard, which that is in the group that is not on YouTube. That was before my YouTube, um, where, you know, many people believed it was a fiance. I felt, you know, the person who took her and her baby, um, was a woman faking a pregnancy that was found. You can verify that it's, there's videos in my group if you ever want to search and you can also go on the internet. And I did say it was somebody faking a pregnancy took her and her baby. The baby was found. Heidi was dead. The woman had been freaking a pregnancy all along. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> you know, so some people are good at missing person. I know there, there are some that can, can get some things and I could show, I could show cases on YouTube of, of, you know, cops and, and psychics that are interviewed together that, that they helped them. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, it's frustrating because I know there are people out there that have helped cops before 
okay, maybe to help locate somebody or figure out what, you know, whatever it may be. But yes, this was a, a different, it, you know, it, it could be the lights, the this, the that, and everything, you know, obviously the fame and uh, getting this one wrong. Okay, so let's go to see Only what you said. Uh, by the name of Keith. Keith? Is it a kid or an uh, adult? No, no, it's a young kid. Because there's somebody by the name of Keith, the blonde kid, who saw him after this 4:30 period. Oh, I do want to point out, doesn't, and I'm not, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Um, also, when I did the Kylie Rodney read, um, this is way before Adventures with Purpose, and way before the guy that got interviewed, which came later. Okay, this is before they were on the scene or anything like that. When I was doing the read and writing the keywords, I wrote down the name Nick. Nick is the one who found Kylie Rodney. He is, he's the actual one who dove and found her. Um, but there is also a Nick. There's two Nicks in that story. Also a Nick, everybody knows about this um, pretty much, who's investigated the Kylie Rodney, um, who got interviewed, who has kind of a story. I know there are some that are hard, find it hard to believe that Kylie just drove into the water and, and things like that, which I, I'm not going to go into this, uh, the, the whole, you know, she's found. Um, I, I know there are a lot of people still talking about it. But in read one, when I was writing down keywords, I did write down the name Nick. Um, Sometimes, I, I don't know where she got Keith. I'm, I'm finally, obviously Keith is not relevant, but I'm just trying to point out, I, I don't want you guys to think that people can't help with missing persons cases um, or get keywords or things that can be helpful. It, and But you know, it, those, those of us who are really trying, trying to help, trying to be authentic, you know, we're doing our best trying to channel spirit and get whatever little bit we can okay to be able to do it all right let me go back well i'd ask ask around because he doesn't live that far from where the friend is you see what i mean he wasn't a best friend but he sort of goes in and out of the group because he was picked up in a in a blue colored sedan by um a guy by the name of um michael and the last name sounds like just somebody who lives in the area, somebody passing through somebody the area? Somebody passing through the area. Yeah. So was it that there? area. Sorry? What was that question? Oh, was it anybody that Sean knew? No. Was he abducted when you say picked up? Yeah, abducted, yeah. He was grabbed. Grabbed. Is yeah. there any better description of the vehicle other than just a blue the sedan? The vehicle is a blue sedan, and I think it's a Chevrolet. Uh, it's an older Chevrolet. It reminds me of what I had years ago, you know, with sort of with the tail fins on them, which was what, around 58, 59? It's an old model car. Old model car. I think they called them, what were they, Impalas? Were they Impalas? Yeah. Pretty sure it was Impala. I had to keep an eye on the so clock because I gotta, I gotta leave the soon. Driving the car. Yeah. The, the guy was um, dark skinned. Um, although he wasn't black, he was more uh, Hispanic looking, um, had, uh, real long dark hair and strange enough Hispanic, but he had dreadlocks. Um, he was, um, really tall and really almost like what you think a basketball player's build would be. Can you tell how far from the area he was taken? Maybe about 20 miles. But he's still within a 20 mile radius even he's now? He's still within 20 mile radius of, let's say, here's where you are, 20 mile radius, but it's really southwest of where you are. Southwest. So whatever is southwest, because it looks like this is, here we go again with the wooded, with the, you know, the wooded area. So southwest of you. Is there any landmarks around? Yeah, strange enough, there are two jagged boulders, which just look really misplaced with this, because just, um, everything is trees, and then all of a sudden you've got these stupid I mean, boulders sitting there. I mean, this this inform I I guess it's kind of frustrating. Um, was she channeling anything? Obviously, she was not. Um, when I sit there, it is it's it's very frustrating. Uh, maybe she, or maybe she thought she was, or however, like she's kind of seeing. What, what I tuned in knowing how, you know, I, I have to fight for information, um, in, in a lot of readers and those I've, oh God, I'm sorry guys. Um, those who've done missing person reads have to fight for information because that's kind of what we do. Um, it, it just, she seems to 
kind of get some specifics, but yet none of the specifics obviously had, were had any relevance. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so it, it's just it, it it is a very frustrating um thing here that is that is happening um with this with um Sylvia Brown and stuff. So you know, I I get you know that Doreen Virtue is, is kind of pointing out you know that you know this 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 wasn't good this wasn't good if it was to really be a say good or appropriate maybe sit with the family you know privately and and it, it just you know um i and i i, I would I, I mean if it was me sitting in front of a big old audience like like what i'm sitting here on video and youtube i have no distractions really but i'm just talking to the camera just to you guys um versus if i was sitting in an audience i, I feel it would be very hard I, I i would have a very hard time um you know doing stuff just because there's so much stuff going on with so many people but you know this this is um you know, I mean, what's in her mindset? It's it's real hard. It, it it's real hard to say and stuff. And and I know some people can operate with no tools. I know she clearly didn't. She wasn't big on tools. Um, but um, not everybody uses them. Not every of us use cards. But I I don't see some kind of really you know a, a kind of a, a focused um energy here. Kind of it just you know and she has answers fairly quick versus really trying to sit there and fight meditate. When I say fight for it, like sometimes you got to fight for information. Sometimes as a reader, something's coming very easy and smooth and I'm about to die here. Um, so I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. I'm going to have to do a part two, guys, because I do have to get going. I'll do a part two on this. And then um, sometimes, you know, you got to fight for information and stuff like that. But clearly we could see um, that, you know, she was saying certain things and and then it, it all... Um, it, it, it was wrong and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, but yes, let me do this. Um, I, I went fairly wrong on this vid. I, I'm going to get, I do want to get back to this, but I do, A, I got to get going. I got, I got to um, go because I'm moving to the, tomorrow and stuff. So I, I, I got to run up and, and I got to do some things, but I really want to touch on this, this topic. Like I said, at the same time, I, I, I understand why, you know, say Doreen Virtue, you know, she's all in her thing now and stuff, but she's kind of showing a, some very bad examples of, of Sylvia Brown at, at her worst, you could say, um, which, and then trying to, you know, this whole demonic thing that she's always on and stuff. But I also wanted to take her to task on a few things there. Like, okay, you could sit there and you could blast Sylvia Brown. Okay. I'm with you. She's wrong on that. She's clearly wrong. Thank God the little boy is here. And this is the one time us psychics want to be right. If they are alive, I'm 100% ready for it and stuff. You know, we all want that. God, I hope so and stuff. Though I have to admit there was one time I kicked this lady out of the group and stuff. Somebody ended up being alive. There was, this is way early in my group. Um, so we were, we were trying to look at a missing person. Um, the person that being alive and she was actually mad. She was wrong. I'm not kidding. She's like, oh, so... And and, she, and and we we all sit there. What? <laughs> Are you crazy? You you upset? You wrong? The person's alive. I kicked him out because they. It's like what you have no human connection here. You you're insane if you um, are upset with yourself that you were wrong about a person being dead. Okay. Um, you know this this is the one time that like thank God like save Kylie Ryan been found. Thank God I got it wrong. Right. Okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready for it and stuff, ready, happy, you know, that, that we always want to be wrong, especially if it involves a child, we want to be wrong. Like say with reading Quentin Simon, which it's, it's looking obviously, you know, we want to be wrong. Okay. We're, we're all, but if, if we're seeing the darkness, we, we hope to God it's wrong. We always do. Okay. So, you know, I just, I kicked him out. I kicked him out. Okay. So let, let's do, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. I, I do want to continue to show you some more of this. I know I wanted to talk about some things and stuff. So spirit talk, look for part two on this, but yes, I did want to point out, you know, okay, you can talk about Sylvia Brown being wrong, but what about all these Christians in the church who were wrong about Trump? Okay. What if, if she, okay, she's wrong. This, that demonic, what are they? Oh, but because they're Christian, they're open to Bible. This, that, what about them? Because there was a lot of them. All right. We'll go ahead and then uh, we'll come back to part two.